from Ohio. Thank you, Mr. President. We've had so much good news in Ohio and across the country over the last few weeks. Rising wages, record job growth, a million jobs in two months. Intel is bringing 10,000 new good paying manufacturing and trades jobs to central Ohio. That facility will be built by union workers, electricians and carpenters and, and uh, laborers and pipe fitters and other workers in the skilled trades. Hyperion of fuel manufacturers opening the largest factory built in Columbus in a decade, creating 700 jobs. GE Aviation with Boeing signed a new deal exporting planes built with next generation jet engines developed in Southwest Ohio, supporting thousands of Ohio jobs. So I was flying into Columbus uh, with Senator Portman a couple of weeks ago to join Intel to announce those jobs. I was thinking, today we're finally burying the term Rust Belt. For too long, corporate elites on the coast have used that outdated offensive term, a term that demeans our workers and devalues our work. Now Ohio, the center of the country, the heart of the industrial Midwest, leads the way in the next generation of manufacturing. The state that founded the auto industry and gave us the Wright brothers is today making the most advanced chips that go into cars and phones and appliances. All this is made possible because we're putting American workers at the center of our economy. It's not a coincidence we're seeing this record job growth when we finally have a president who understands what carrying a union card means, who centers workers, who cares about wages, who comes from the industrial heartland. A union card that means better wages, a union card that means better benefits, a union card that often means a more flexible work schedule within the, the, the that workers have a decision and input into forming. And look at the results we're getting. Last year, for the first time in 20 years, our economy grew faster than China. Think about that. For the first time in two decades, the American economy grew faster than China's economy. We know that China and other competitors aren't giving up. They are every, every week trying to find new ways to cheat, new ways to undermine American jobs. We need every t possible tool to compete. It's why last year in the Senate, we passed the Innovation and Competition Act. We passed what we're now calling the Make It in America Act. It's a serious effort to invest in manufacturing, research and development, and bring and build supply chains back in the U.S. It's going to mean jobs. It's going to bring down prices. For too long, we've had a trade policy and a tax policy lobbied in this body by corporate interests that wanted to move overseas for cheap labor. We've had a trade and a tax policy that essentially hollowed out manufacturing in Ohio and across the Midwest. Ohioans know what permanent normal trade relations with China 20 years ago when Congress passed it at the behest of corporate America and pushed by people like Newt Gingrich. People know what that did to our economy. People know what um, most everyone knows the devastation the North American Free Trade Agreement caused to industrial towns in Ohio and across the country. PNTR admitting China to the WTO hasn't gotten the same media attention, but Ohio Steel Companies and other industry know how big a problem that's been. It's how we ended up with empty factories, long lost dreams, supply chains that are too long, too fragile, and that stretch all over the world instead of made in America. It's why I wrote the Level the Playing Field Act that was passed into law in 2015. It's why Senator Portman and I are working to make sure that our bipartisan Level the Playing Field Act 2.0 is in the competition bill, the Made in America Act, the House passed last week. Level the playing field has been critical for Ohio companies, allowing them to file and win trade cases against foreign companies that cheat the rules. We know our competition hasn't stopped coming up with new ways to skirt these rules and distort the global market to benefit their own companies. The Chinese government still subsidizes steel. The Chinese government engages in economic espionage to steal American trade secrets to prop up their own state-controlled companies. Look at the most recent conviction of the Chinese spy trying to steal GE Aviation's pioneering jet engine designs to swipe them and take them back to China. We need our trade laws to keep up. Both the Senate and the House bills include the CHIPS Act to invest in new semiconductor production in the U.S. like the new Intel factory coming 
to Licking County, east and north of Columbus. Even though the U.S. started the semiconductor industry, today those vital chips are mostly made overseas. Only fewer than 10 percent of chips are made in this country. Right now, 75 percent of chip manufacturing is in Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, and China. It's meant severe shortages and long waits for those chips that are critical inputs in so many of the products Americans rely on. We need to bring this supply chain back home, starting with Intel in Ohio. By passing the CHIPS Act, we must invest in domestic manufacturing innovation. It's what Missouri Republican Senator Blunt and I worked together to do with our provisions in the Senate bill to create more manufacturing hubs across the country. The first one, as many in this body remember, because they voted for it, was in Youngstown some years ago, something called America Makes. All of us in the Senate and House need to get to work immediately to get these bills over the finish line. If you want to get a sense of how important this is, how strong these bills are, just look at what China's doing, Mr. President. The Chinese Communist Party is lobbying furiously against this bill. That's right. The CCP and its cronies, the Communist Party in China, are lobbying against a bill that invests in American innovation, supports American manufacturing, takes on unfair and illegal trade practices. They're, they're scared, pure and simple. They know that pro-competition bills, the Make It in America Act, will have real consequences for their cheating and their trying to undermine American workers. A Reuters headline from November, Beijing urges U.S. businesses to lobby against China-related bills in Congress. I'll say it again. Beijing urges U.S. businesses to lobby against China-related bills in Congress. Unfortunately, I won't name them on the floor, maybe I should, but there are U.S. businesses that are lobbying against this because they do enough business in China, exploiting Chinese workers, evading any environmental laws or worker safety laws that may be in place. The Chinese government threatens these American companies, recruiting them to lobby against the interests of American workers. This time, we're not rolling over. We're going to stand up for American innovation, stand up for American manufacturing, stand up especially for American workers. As I said, we have a president now that, that puts workers at the center of our economic policy. We have a president who puts this workers at the center of our economy. We have a president who's not afraid to talk about unions, knowing carrying a union card means a better life for workers. We're going to get a strong bipartisan bill that increases our economic competitiveness. We know how to speed up our supply chain in lower prices and end our reliance on China, make more things in this country. Mr. President, that's a solution to many of our economic problems. Make it in Ohio. I urge my colleagues in both parties and both chambers to go to work. Let's get this done for American workers.